Welcome to The Rec Room with Mandy and Mio, a podcast about books and the people who write them. Amanda, I was thinking, yes. instead of reading the ending of the novel like I did in the last episode, I could introduce okay. this book in a totally new way. Start this whole right. show on a brand new foot. This is never good, but okay. I'm going to go summarize the novel now. Here we go. Okay. You're going to summarize the novel? He was a boy. She was a girl. Oh, God. Can I make it any more obvious? She was a punk. He wore a chain. What more can I say? She wanted him. He'd never tell. Secretly, he wanted her as well. Oh, yeah. But all of his friends stuck up their nose. They had a problem with her episodes. I really hate this. He was a flaky boy. She said, see you later, boy. He was. She wasn't good Did enough you know? for him. He had a pretty face, but his head's in Caraclay. Do normal people <laughs> know what they're worth? <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, now you know the why... The worst part is, is that it was like, it's good. <laughs> now, now you know why I texted you like five yeah. hours ago asking you, yeah. would you say that Connell is a flaky guy? <laughs> yeah. And then like and five minutes I later. I right was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, we like debated it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like five minutes later, I was like, would you say that Marianne is a punk? <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of these are debatable, but I just I have know. to make sure that by you, I was like, yeah, I can, I, can, I can make this pass. I can make this pass. All right. Okay. And of course, we can get everyone else to pass through our doors because we are now entering the rec room with Mandy and Mio. This is a podcast where we ask the question, when does a writer's work become required reading? In each episode, we take popular authors of the day and review each entry in their bibliographies to see just how close these writers get to the sweet spot between mainstream breakout success and traditional literary sensibility. I am Mio. I'm Mandy. And we are talking about the books of Miss Sally Rooney, the Irish novelist yeah. who uh, first made her debut in 2017, was it that we were saying? I, I almost want to like reconsult my old notes, but uh, yeah. she broke out with Around her debut, uh, Conversations with Friends, which we talked about in the last episode. Uh, and very shortly after that, she came out <coughs> with her second book, which a lot more people know her for yeah uh and that uh we mentioned in the previous episode and um, i mean by by now everyone must know yeah that it's largely because of the limited series yes adaptation that was made of her second novel Mm -hmm. normal people which will also i guess we'll talk about it today yeah we're gonna talk about it uh did you uh, i recently rewatched it right after rereading the book and I was immediately, I, I was immediately like kind of, <laughs> sort of like, oh, okay, I, I see where people are kind of getting in on this. Yeah, you were into it. Yeah, yeah. you would like message me about it. And I honestly, I, I will say, I, I didn't expect you to be as like invested in it. I guess we're going to bring it up later, but it's because of one aspect, isn't it? Yes, okay. Because of a certain... <laughs> uh, we're, yeah, I'm going to reveal that eventually. <laughs> The, the yeah. thing is, I mean, like, so, like, you know how when we were, we would be, when we were all growing up, we would get into that debate of whether or not the book is better than the movie, the movie is better right. than the book, or yeah. essentially this People idea, yeah, of adaptation versus source material. And in this right. case, this is one of those cases where, you know, the adaptation is quite close yeah. to capturing the spirit but of the source material. I, of the little that I've seen of it, I still think it can hold it. Sure. Yeah. Which. I, yeah. Which uh, which is true because uh, otherwise people wouldn't have gotten on the normal That's people train. Yeah. Right? No? Yeah. Uh, but that being said, let's get into the context of this book. So uh, after Conversations with Friends was published, um, Sally Rooney, I was watching this um, interview of her at the London Review of Books. Book, right. Bookstore. I, I'm not okay. 
I know it as LRB, but I yeah. forget if it's... That's where we went, right? Yeah, like we've been we there. went there. We went there. I forgot if it's London Review Bookshop, oh. Bookstore, London Review of Books. Books. I'm so sorry, yeah. literary world. I've failed you. I have yeah. to turn in my literary... Shout out to that place. <laughs> my that my place elitist so <laughs> literary card. Um, but um, she has this really great interview with the LRB that I'm we're going to link into the show notes. And... Um, in that interview, she was talking about how normal people started out as uh, two short stories, in fact. Uh, most people know about one, but there was an earlier short story that she had begun to write uh, after Conversations with Friends was published. And that story was about two people who see each other after a long time, and they see each other at a protest in Dublin. Uh, and she was very interested in the dynamic between those two people. She was like emphasizing yeah. that she's never really interested in characters in isolation, uh, which which I think is very telling about um, what she wanted to write about really in her previous novel in Conversations with Friends. Because at least in Conversations with Friends, uh, we were talking about the perspective of that novel, that it's first person and it's very closed inside yes. the head of its main character, Francis. But you know, with this idea of her being interested in dynamics, in character dynamics, you start to build this idea that, oh, she was actually more interested in the relationships that Frances had with different people in her life, uh, in spite of being right. in that first-person perspective. Now, that's more obvious in normal people because it's not in a first-person perspective. Yeah. It's now taking the third-person closed perspective, which is like, it's very close into their thoughts and it's very personal um and that's something that's kind of consistent in all the forms that normal people has manifested in so it started with that story about a protest in dublin that story didn't really go anywhere but she tried to materialize their dynamic once again in another story that eventually got published and it ended up in a 2016 issue of the literary journal the white review that story was called At the Clinic. Uh, she was right. uh, Sally Rooney told the New Statesman, I kept wanting to write about these characters who were in their early 20s, and their relationship had this texture to it because of their history. Eventually, I thought, what if I just went back and just told their story from the beginning, chronologically? Right. And you can see that actually in At the Clinic. Uh, yeah. There are some minor differences, but they're very clearly like the seeds or the shells of the characters that mm -hmm. will eventually dominate the Sally Rudy narrative. Yeah. Uh, they Connell and Marion are like 23, if I'm not mistaken in that story. And right. they're going to the dentist because Marianne wants to have, needs to have a tooth removed or something. And right. like the whole time they're kind of having like all these casual disagreements or like, she's like <laughs> pointing out his faults. Like there was a funny moment where like she pointed out a fault of his, uh, like she was saying, like, oh, my, like her toothache, she was saying, my toothache is slicing through my cheek like butter. And then Connell had no idea what she was talking about. I was like, what do you mean? What did you mean by slicing through your cheek like butter? And she's like, I've been telling you this for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So it kind of just goes to show that their dynamics very loaded with history and all these things. Yeah. Uh, but that story is very much like a precursor to normal yeah. people as a whole. And you'll see already that she kind of had the dynamic figured out. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as all these other details that would eventually reappear uh, in relationships with different names. Like you'll see the relationship that Marianne has with Jamie is in the story. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. There's like That's a... Wild. And like kind of like the sense of her, of Marianne... Having like a like I wouldn't even say low self esteem, but like right. a, a sense of like degrade, 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 degrading. I'm I'm I don't know degrading. how to say words. Yeah, like yeah. a very bad. It's down there. Self deprecation. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. But it's to the to the point that um, wait. So in the story, she's with Jamie. So in the story, she's... so they're in Crackley. No, in the story, they're they're coming out of Dublin. I think they are in Dublin. Actually, I'm not too sure. That's the part I forgot. But um, she has just broken up with uh, oh. her boyfriend in that story, who's not named Jamie, but is named yeah. Daniel. And the um, cause of their breakup is was... Jamie? No, no. Was that um, Marianne had told her boyfriend, Daniel, that she had had a dream of being married to Connell. 
Yeah, which is like, Jeez. all right. <laughs> the layers. Yeah. Just, um... uh, so that got pretty intense. But then the thing, the thing that's common between Daniel and the Jamie character who would appear in Normal People uh, is that they kind of tap into the sort of sadomasochistic relationship that Marion has with them. And there's a line that she says in the story that I remember reappearing in the novel where she says okay. something like, she tells Connell, sometimes I think I deserve bad things because I'm a bad person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's like this huge reoccurring uh, theme, yeah, theme point her. or motif with her character is this yeah. like sense that she does not deserve anything good. Good, uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, apart from At the Clinic, she actually, Sally Reneal had another story that got published called Mr. Salary, um, which has less of a, I guess, like, connective tissue with normal people uh, and more connective tissue with conversations with friends because it's about a woman who is dating a much older man, uh, but she's also contemplating uh, the impending death of her father and kind of thinking about her own oh, mortality yeah. and the whole yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that story eventually um, got shortlisted for another big award, the Sunday Times EFG Private Bank Short Story. So that was in 2017, and then by 2018, she had already finished Normal People, it got published, and that same year, it was long listed for the Man Booker Prize, which is one of the biggest, like, that's the big literary prize in the UK. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing there is that, like, the culture that they have towards the Booker Prize is really intense, where I've mm-hmm. seen, like, especially friends, will buy the entire long list and make it their wow. summer reading list. Oh, that's really wild. Yeah, that's like, yeah. That's more intense than like watching all the like best picture nominations. Exactly, and they really make a habit yeah. of buying it all at once. Yeah. So wait, sorry. So they buy the long list and yeah. not the short list. Well, sometimes oh. it, it depends. Like sometimes they'll buy the long list. I've seen people buy the long list. I've also seen people buy the short list. Yeah, but they're all these the people who buy the long list. But like they all they buy all these books at once and then. Yeah. You know, they they say we're all we're gonna all read this and this is my summer reading list. Like, okay, that's that's cool. I, I wouldn't yeah. necessarily read all of them, but Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so normal people was uh made it into that list. It was also chosen by Waterstones, uh the fully booked of the UK, as the yeah. book of Shout the year. <laughs> Shout out to Waterstones, <laughs> the, yeah, um, the people out in <laughs> Norwich, where I used to live. Yes. <laughs> I never really knew any of their names. <laughs> um, okay, so earlier this April, a limited series adaptation was released, and that series was d- directed by Lenny Abrahamson, who was the director of Room with Brie Larson, and Brooklyn, another very Ireland centric yeah, film with Sersha, like an Ursha Ronan. Yeah. Uh, and it was uh, the other half of the episodes were directed by Hetty McDonald. So for any Doctor Who fans, she is the director responsible for the falling. Uh, sorry, for the Weeping Angels episode, Blink. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. So they oh, got her. Way. They got her, which is like really funny to me because then I was watching the episode. I was like, this isn't scary. It's just good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like this is her chilling out. Yeah. Exactly. Know? Exactly. <laughs> And then the screenplays for each of the episodes were by Sally Rooney herself. She was oh, there nice. for the first half uh, of the series. And then the rest of the series, in fact, the whole series overall, was uh, adapted by Alice Birch, who is a screenwriter and dramatist. Um, and she had written, if, you, if you've seen um, the film Lady Macbeth with Florence Pugh, uh, oh, she, she wrote, wrote that? that. She wrote that. She's actually oh, she's got a really wow. extensive yeah, writing, uh, really... yeah, writing credits, man. Yeah, yeah. So very impressive, and no wonder it was good. Of yeah, course, we all honestly. we all know who starred in Normal People the series: Paul Mescal and Daisy Edgar Jones. And I think I think it's easy for Break us to be stars. able to, yeah, definitely. And I think it's easy for us to be able to like incorporate our discussion of the series as we're talking about the book Mm -hmm. uh, because they're so closely, they're just so closely related to each other. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get into the book. So the book, the thing about this compared to conversations with friends, it's weird because this book is technically shorter. 
Yes, but it's so. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I, it's okay. I'm not to preempt stuff also, but like um, I said a similar thing to Ariel yesterday. She, our friend Ariel, our friend of the podcast, oh, a friend of the podcast. Um, she she had just finished the book as well, like two days ago, and I and we had a minor conversation about it, and she had. I, I remember telling her that the thing about, like, what I noticed about Sally's writing, like, um, between conversations and this, is, like, sh- she is so... Another thing she's so good at is, like, making... Building up to stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you think so- nothing is really gonna happen. Like, it's her just setting up the thing. And then, big a huge thing is gonna happen. And you're like, oh, shit. I should have paid attention to that. Right. Um, and I feel like normal people is, like so full of that because like what you were saying earlier it's like two um points of view now so there's a lot to that there's a lot that can happen yeah certainly and And, then and 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 i think at the same time like kind of jumping off of what you're saying the 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 way she approaches each chapter kind of reflects that in an interesting way like if you'll notice like apart from the fact that she alternates perspectives in every chapter uh, she also does this thing where she situates each chapter in a present event. So there's always like a present yes. moment or a present event. And then in the middle yeah. of it, she'll suddenly go into a flashback and kind of fill us like in on yeah. what happened, right? Oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and it, it kind of gives you and, this But sense. then there are also yeah. times where she does it in um, chapters. What do you mean? Like, like, um, like for example, this is jumping a, a bit ahead, but the... The oh wait I guess it's not that big of a flashback. Well, I was thinking because I have the mass of the dad. It was mentioned mm, in one right, chapter. Right, right, right. Yes, and yes. And then in, and then the flashback of it didn't happen until the next chapter. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And yeah. and it kind of like preempts this idea that um, each moment of the present is kind of loaded with all these things that happened in the past. Right. And so her right. selection of each chapter scene is very careful because. She wants to make sure that she isn't uh, passing through too much time while she's going through mm-hmm. the present moment, but giving yeah. you enough context to launch into a flashback yeah. and say, okay, here's what you missed, actually. Two months ago, yeah. they slept together yeah. and so and so. Yeah. I think, and then also going back to what, like that quote of your of hers that you read earlier, that um, she really wanted them to have like a textured relationship or like right. a textured uh, past like that she is so good at like doing what she wants you know <laughs> or like get, getting fleshing out what she intended um because like you really feel like even if the novel starts with them already like basically knowing each other i mean like obviously they've known each other halos their whole lives because their town is quite small um but when when the novel starts like they she that's when she starts to build it right and then mm. as it progresses and you have the flashbacks you're kind of just like all oh, right it's just, it's been years like this has been going on for yeah years. and and the book itself like it spans from if i'm not mistaken january 2011 to february 2015 thereabouts to, yeah yeah so, which was interesting so literally, to, yeah because like, we were students <laughs> yeah yeah i was gonna say so, are they so, our batchmates yeah, batch. oh, they were my they're your batchmates. They're they're kabatch not with mine. well, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Or, well, they're roughly kabatch with both of us. So I mean, like you know, if yeah. we basically went to Trinity, I mean, College, like if we went to uni, yeah, if we yeah, went to Trinity, we, we, we would have seen, seen them. them. We would have seen we them. Been like, hey, there's always this guy. It's like, right? are you taking the uni? They don't look like a bunch of normal people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so 2011, the novel starts. Um, they're in high school. Well, mm-hmm. they they call it they they just call it school secondary or secondary, <laughs> secondary school. school or school yeah. as like UK people and Irish people and Irish, Irish yeah. people yeah call it. and they're coming through to the final exams uh, yeah. to get into university kind of like, yeah all these things that they have to do uh, and right away you see in you see the two main characters Connell Waldron and Marianne Sheridan. Yes. They're both already very fleshed out people, and you, that's what makes this such a good entry point. Uh, rather than entering, say, in, in like their first year of high school or when they first yeah. met, you know, because or like of, as children, right? And and for both Connell and Marianne, 
they're very it's a it's a very there's a very specific context to where we would find where we find them as they're finishing school, particularly Marianne, because when okay. we first meet Marianne, we find one of right. the first things we find out about that her is scene. that her father's died. Uh, and we don't mm-hmm. know yet about the significance of her father's relationship with her in her life. But that's something that's going to kind of be yeah. un, you know, unfurled as the book goes on. It's like looming. Yeah. Right. It is. Yeah. It is very much looming. It's a very much a looming presence. And I think that's that's actually pretty good of Sally to withhold that from us right off the yeah, bat. Until yeah. Because we know clearly, oh, okay, like the fact that he died when she was still young is definitely important. But you also immediately get the sense, I think from the second chapter onward, that uh, this house is not an easy house to live in. Yeah. And how the dad might have affected that uh, could figure into it. Right. Because she has, she has one brother, uh, and his name's Alan. Yeah. Uh, to call him a dick would be an understatement. It's like super understatement. Yeah. And yeah, like insane in right. the membrane. Yeah. So he's yeah. He basically all bullies the worst her. things you could ever He bullies say her and then it person. escalates. It yes. just keeps escalating. It just keeps going it, up. Yeah. Which is great. Okay, can I just like say a little th- those scenes with Alan yeah. are so difficult to get like i, know, I literally I was like i literally want this to be over like but then also you know that i don't want to just like read through it and not yeah feel what's happening but you know like that would be so disrespectful to sally but like and I, that's how you know also it's good because like it's so gripping but in a horrible way exactly like, i really hate that this is happening right i mean now. i i felt and, that way as it, well Oh, sorry, go. Sorry, no. Uh, I, I felt that way as well about uh, Jamie, the Jamie character. Yes. Whenever he showed uh, up, I was like, I hate this guy. Yeah. <laughs> She's so good at making, like, whenever he was there, it's 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 literally the textual version of when the person you don't like enters the room. Exactly. And then the sh- everyone just changes. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. that's literally, that's him. And especially particularly to Alan, what, what's interesting there is that that's also true, not just about not just with regard to Marianne, but also with regard to the mother. Like, the mom does not know right. how to kind of, like, like assert herself as a mother over her son, if that makes sense. And, yeah, or, like, she doesn't know how to... I mean, like... She doesn't know how to be a mother. Yeah, I mean, like, the, thing, like, the things I'm referring mark. to are, like, there is a point later on where um, Alan bullies Marianne and the mom kind of brushes it off as, oh, come on, you know, it's sibling rivalry. Can't you just take a little sibling rivalry? Yeah, it's sibling rivalry. rivalry. Yeah. When she could just yeah. easily tell off Alan. Yeah. You know, she never really takes Marianne's side. Yeah. So, and this, okay, in those scenes where, the, like, this, there are, like, four scenes where the mom is, like, for real there. Yeah. Or, like, less, yeah. probably. Yeah. But, like, every time I always imagine her to be super old, boomer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I'm like, there's no way. Like, no one else says that kind of shit unless you're, like, super old. But, which is, like, I don't know. But, you know, like, I really imagine her to be, like, super old and horrible. Because, like, right. she totally was. And so was Alan. I, I, I always imagined, like, oh, Alan is, like, probably one of those guys that doesn't wash their hair. Oh, my know? God. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. He gave me that energy. So yeah, right? Unwashed you know? hair energy. <laughs> like a 100, yes. If you, unwashed hair If you, dear listener, energy, that's know anyone yes. that has unwashed hair energy, please report them to us and we will yes. forward your... And they are automatically fan-casted as Alan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the thing about also their family is that they're rich. That's like kind of the big facet about yes. their family. And... Especially because they live in such a small provincial town, they stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Uh, and the thing that entangles her family with Connell's family is that Connell's mom works as is a cleaner. There, yeah. Yeah, in their house, she works there. She goes there like two times a week. Right. And um, and in fact, that's the way the book opens. The book opens with mm-hmm. Connell coming to pick up his mom. Uh, on the day that their mock GCSE results come out. Come out, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, Mary, uh, sorry, Connell and his mom are both, like, they're clearly working class people. 
Uh, Connell doesn't know who his father is. Uh, yeah. And and Connell's mom, Lorraine, had Connell when, when she was like very she young. She was 17? She was like 17, she was like yeah. 17, yeah. Yeah. So and everyone knew about it. Like, it's one of those things that Sally uses to like emphasize how small their town is. Yeah. Like, she even says something about how Connell's family is actually a notorious family. A notorious family, yeah. Right, like, one of them got in jail, one of them got into, like, a motorcycle accident. Yeah, and and it's it's to the point that they kind of see Connell as the good seed of the family. Like, oh, he's the one among us who's actually going to succeed, which puts a lot of pressure on him. On him, which, yeah, yeah, which is evident all throughout. Whereas, like, he has, like, this underlying kind of, not really desire, I wouldn't even say it's a desire, but there's sort of this underlying curiosity about his dad, uh, whom he doesn't know. Lorraine knows who his dad is, and he doesn't, like, press her to tell she, him yeah and she has i remember her, him thinking like remembering that she has said um that he can ask whatever she he wants yeah like, he just doesn't he doesn't he doesn't yeah he doesn't which super relate <laughs> but i don't know if that sort of gives him kind of the license to be like okay well i mean i don't know that <laughs> that could be just but in any case um when it's so interesting that you feel like he mm-hmm. that like he had that underlying thing about his dad because I didn't feel that at all, or I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I I was thinking about it. I remember the first time I read the book, I was thinking a lot about it because the question had come up in one chapter where he kind of just like hints to Lorraine, like, "Well, you know who my dad is." Um, oh, was this when he was drunk? Yeah, kind of. So and for, he was upset. So for me, I about... yeah, I sense that. Right. That there was a part of it. I mean, that that also naturally okay. feeds into his anxiety later on. Yeah. I think you know. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's okay, that, I get. It. Yeah, okay. there, there's that sort of subtextual idea. It's not really like made clear, but that sort of subtextual idea that he doesn't feel wanted uh, by his parents. Like he certainly manifests that feeling towards his mom. Yeah, because uh, he doesn't even call her mom. Yeah, he doesn't call her mom. He calls her Lorraine. Or he and, calls her Lorraine. And yeah. he kind of like is waiting for her to validate him. Uh, right. But that becomes a whole arc throughout the book. Mm-hmm. So Connell and Marianne, um, when the book opens, they meet at her house because he's picking up the mom. And right away, she starts hinting at this thing about like, well, you know, you know, you're, we know you're all the, we all know that you're the popular guy in school yeah and like you know people like you you're very much well loved even and then she kind of like gets into the point of insinuating like i kind of like you too you know yeah like you're smart you don't actually have to be in that crowd and he's like really nervous about it like uh okay (laughs) all right (laughs) but then that eventually brings him to like ask her hey like what did you mean that you like me yeah. Like, did you like me as a friend? Or... or And she's like, no. Yeah. And so they basically get on from there. Like, yeah. And they start having, like, a secret relationship uh, where they're just sleeping together in the regular. Yeah. And uh, right away, you kind of see the power dynamics that are happening between them as they manage their relationship. Because mm-hmm. um, and it shifts. Often. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because since I mean, like over over the years, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and it shifts especially when they go to college. Because when they're in high school, mm-hmm. uh, like Marianne's status it's is that his game. Yeah, and Marianne's status is she's not really a popular person at school. A lot of people mm-hmm. make fun of her, and yeah. you can kind of get the sense that the reason that they're making fun of her is precisely because she's from a rich family because she's yeah yeah because at the same time like it it feels like the idea that they would make fun of her for having sort of like mental breakdowns after her dad died is a bit i don't know i would say it's a bit too harsh yeah but that definitely gives them room to or like father to externalize their kind of like class hatred of her yeah uh meanwhile connell so he's Sort of like a jock. He's a football hero He's a f- in the yeah. school. Um, and everyone's sort of like expecting him to fulfill this image of a, like almost like a prom king jock. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he's also worried the whole while about his relationship with Marianne kind of like coming through and upsetting yeah. that balance. 
like he he thinks for all the wrong reasons that they would like judge him for it. Yeah. Because he knows that they don't like her. Yeah. When in reality, like, and then when he brings it up to his mom, like when she finds out about it, he's like, don't tell anybody. And she's like, who the hell would I tell even? And then he was like, right. I just don't want it to get out. And then he, and then she says, why? Because she's rich and we're not. And that's the first time he like thinks about it. Yeah. Because the whole time he was thinking about it more of like his own reputation and not even that di- like that that sorry that like relevance of like their their classes right if that makes sense and even this early and then on, and then that gets mixed into it and he gets even more anxious about it um so yeah anyway so there so i was just i just wanted to say that like, he was anxious for like no reason eventually yeah like he eventually finds out and i mean that sort of feeds into uh well i would say like kind of like the things that happen between them and their relationship even very early on it's clear that they have very different perspectives of the world like yes because i think and and i think this is not necessarily because of the privilege or lack of privilege but like because marianne doesn't have to worry about uh, where she's going to go to after college and she doesn't have to worry about her status in school. She even quits right. school before it's over. Yeah. Um, you know, for her, in her mind, she's seeing this relationship with Connell as a, you know, will we or won't we? You know, if you really yeah. like me, then come on and say it. Prove it, you know. Prove, yeah, prove, yeah. prove your word and then say it in front of everyone. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we which is actually like a weird like high schoolish way of like so proving right. your love, I guess. I know. Um but for so Connell high school, high school three. Yeah, but for Connell he really thinks specifically of like I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to fit in with her family and you know maybe my family is going to look at me and think, "Oh, you're a rich guy now." Yeah. So whereas like Marianne's like will they won't they? Yeah. For Connell it's can they or can't they? <laughs> Can't they? Okay. All right. Sorry, I've been I've been saving that joke all week. Have you? <laughs> I was That's like, I, I wrote it in my notes, and I was like, oh, can't I wait to you. deliver this zinger. Right. It's gonna all be right. so good. It's gonna be our best episode. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so uh, you know that that um, that difference in perspective eventually brings things to a halt. When um, Connell sort of like under pressure to ask her to with their prom, the which yeah, which is called the Debs. I never really, yeah. I didn't really bother to I look did, up. What's Debs like short like for? The, I don't even. I think deb- can't be de- debutante. Yeah, thingy baka, or like debut. Baka it is. Like maybe it's. But they're all over eighteen. Surely. <laughs> no, that's why. So it's like a joint communal debut. <laughs> debut. <laughs> <where, laughs> all of them are like rosas to each other yeah, and for each flowers. other. <laughs> Because I, I was initially thinking, like, is it debates? No one's no, fighting. No, I also thought, I, I also thought, like, and so in that part where he tells his mom that he's not taking Marianne to the Debs and she's upset about it. Yeah. I was like, like, does she really want Marianne to go to this debate? Like, <laughs> yeah. Really so, bad? Yeah, yeah, she, so he doesn't ask her. He instead asks the popular girl, Rachel. Yeah, Rachel. To, and he doesn't even really like her, which is like, yeah, you know, I kind of felt... like a friend. Yeah, like, I felt kind of bad for Rachel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do feel bad for Rachel because she also clearly liked him. Yeah. But to be fair, she was also really mean. Yeah, no, exactly. So, like, it, it's like they both were, like, mean to each other. Right, and... yeah. She, she was the one who, Rachel was the one who, like, started spreading around rumors about Marianne in high school, Marianne. in fact. So yeah. that kind of also like increased the stakes for Kano in a yeah. way because he knew that Rachel was sort of capable of that. Uh, uh, but yeah. that that thing of um, Kano telling his mom and his mom getting mad at him is actually... I found that an interesting scene because it also lays mm-hmm. uh, the ground for uh, the arc that he has to go through with the mom. Because right. when she gets mad at him for not asking Marianne out. She tells yeah. him, like, I'm disappointed in you. Like, I'm yeah. ashamed of you. I want to get out of the car so that I don't yeah. say other things that I regret. And I think that that kind of sticks itself yeah. in Connell's mind because then he's thinking from then on, well, okay, my dad definitely didn't want me and now my mom's ashamed of me. Yeah. And so his sort of self yeah. sense of self-esteem is now, 
like which has been tied to all these other people is now starting to degrade as well and and that scene i there's a part that i distinctly remember when like when like the mom ex exits the car he sort of has like this um internal monologue ish where he's like saying that he can basically tell her like hey who are you to get out of this car when it's my car i like work right yeah yeah buy this car and then uh and all he does is use it to drive her around because she doesn't have a license Mm -hmm. um and then like parang he he also thinks parang he could easily uh drive down and follow her and just tell her to get back in the car but then he doesn't yeah so i i guess that like adds to what you were just saying where he knows that he earned that spot. I mean, like, he earned something. But then for her to, like, shut him down for something else entirely. Like, yeah, and, and that's... that's he can't a, even bring himself to validate himself. That's actually a pretty interesting point because for him, most of his life has had to do with the idea of earning. Uh, whereas this relationship okay. with Marianne, he kind of knows right away uh, that it's right. Without having mm-hmm. to work as much for it, uh, mm-hmm. and, and it's as right to him. Like the True. the one analog I would kind of put it to is that, the in the same way that he feels naturally inclined to read and love reading, uh, even though it's like sort of like an open secret that his friends at school don't know, um, he loves yeah. to read, and in the same yeah. way he kind of just gets well together with Marianne. Yeah. yeah. No, and like the fact that like. Going back to you saying that he didn't really have to work for something yeah. for once in his life. She was the one who told... She made Amin first. Like, un, totally unprompted. Like, it, in that first scene. You know what I mean? Like, she mm-hmm. is the one trying to talk to him and have a good conversation with him. That eventually... Like, where she's like, everyone likes you. Including me. Yeah. You know? Like, parang he, and that's one of the reasons why he gets so flustered is because, like, obviously he doesn't see it coming because maybe they had never really interacted that much before that. Right. Or. Which is funny because, um, like, it made and again, me wonder. I guess going back also to the fact that, like, no, sige, go. I'm sorry, no, it just made me wonder how long Connell's mom had been working for their house. Uh, and how long he'd been sort of picking yeah. up the mom. Yeah, okay, I was wondering that also because clearly she knows. Yeah. Yeah. She also knows about Marianne's family, which is a low-key frustration of mine, but also, like, I get that she wouldn't want to be the person to say it to Connell, but she does say multiple times, like, she doesn't have it easy. Like, yeah, she says that in the first you know, chapter. She tells him that in the first chapter. Like, lo- you should be n- yeah. nice to her. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, she, things are not good. And then he's just like, uh, I don't know. And then, and then she, I think she does bring it up again when he says that, like, that he's not going to bring her to Debs. Because she's, that's one of the, and you can, you can tell that, like, that's really one of the main reasons why she's so disappointed in Connell. Because it's like, um, she knows, I feel like one of the reasons why she can't do stuff for Marianne herself is because, you know, obviously her mom Marianne's mom is her employer, so right. she shouldn't like cross that line. And so I guess maybe she was hoping that Connell would be able to right. do it on their right. family's behalf. I don't right. know if that makes sense. But yeah, but even then, like there were I I don't remember if it was in the book, but in the miniseries there was definitely a scene where Lorraine notices that Marianne is not doing too great. And then she even like gives her a hug. So like, oh, that's in the book also. Oh, okay. There you go. The hug is well, but, the, but that hug is after she decides to stop going to school. Right, 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 right. After Debs. Right. Yes. Yes. And they've broken yeah. up already. That's. I mean, not sorry. Not that's after, what she feels after bad she about. finds out. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and then she hugs him. And Lorraine, honestly, Lorraine is, she's like mom goals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> when she was like. Good for you, Marianne. He doesn't deserve you. I was like, yeah. Be accountable for your son's behavior. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah she's good. She's good. I love her. I love her. Um, so, yeah. okay. Uh, Me too. So, the thing is, like, um, Marianne has also influenced Connell to uh, basically apply for Trinity College Dublin, which he's been hesitant about because he thinks he should go to Galway yes. with his friends. 
and so he's kind of faced with that choice. Like, uh, if he goes to Galway, he can basically stay with his friends, and like life will be the way it was for him yeah. incorrectly, and like he'll probably get a job that suits him, that he thinks will suit him. Whereas if he goes to Trinity, he will get to follow Marianne, uh, mm-hmm. and and even then, like he's kind of like low key anxious about uh like employment prospects because she's like encouraging him hey you can actually apply for english i think you would be great at studying english and he's like shouldn't i apply for law and she's like no you're good at english so you should probably apply for that um yeah and he decides like even though he downplays the idea that he'll even get into trinity he applies anyway and obviously he gets in because he's quite smart yeah yeah and what i was trying to say earlier uh was that him downplaying like his imposter syndrome is is very intense because like that notion of him or like that act of him um downplaying himself is like it happens like four at least four major times Mm -hmm. throughout the book and like and they're all at major points in his life like now he's applying for college and he's like i don't know I guess I'll do law. And then Marianne, to her credit, like this is also how you know that she truly knows him, even when he didn't know himself. Yeah, sorry. But like, really. Um, mm. Because she was like, no, but you're good at English though. And he was like, oh, I, I guess. <laughs> and then, yeah, so like he downplays that. And then when he starts writing, like when they're, this is a bit um, like way into college already or yeah. university. Like they go on like that Euro trip, sort of. Um he he starts writing a lot more then. Yeah. And he and he downplays that as well. Like he doesn't think anything of it. He just yeah. thinks he's doing stuff because they're on the move all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. I'm kind of just like, dude. Like the mother's even that sentence where when he gets to their house, uh, Marianne's house in Italy, um, where he sees like cherries or something. Right. Right. Or, like fruit. Yeah. And he's like, it, they look like earrings. Yeah. And he wants to tell her about it. Yeah. He's like writing it down in his notebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In his mind, he was like, nice, nice, nice. I got something. But then also at the same time, you know that he'd never really, or like he probably thinks he's never going to use that for anything. Yeah. Except probably to tell Marianne. But I think that's, and, mm-hmm. sorry. Okay, so go. No, I was going to say that that's sort of a very telling sign of how his relationship with Marianne, like how much he trusts her also. Yes. Because that that mm-hmm. manifestation of his desire to write like really comes out through their emails. Like he's yeah. he's very clearly using their emails at some point to practice yeah. his writing. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to, this was in my notes, but mm-hmm. I just want to mention real quick, um, again with the white people in the emails. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's going on, guys? No, at least they're not like really? sending each other like songs. It, it I know via like, email. It yeah. sounds like they have a legitimate like correspondence. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, to be fair, at the time they were in different countries. Yeah. Like in the parts where you do see their emails to each other, it's either it's because they were separated by Europe. <laughs> yeah. Or, um, and like he was on the way to Italy, Palang. Or it was when she was in Sweden for yeah. that one for that one, one chapter. Yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. um and then another time that he downplays it. Sorry, just to tie it up. But like the the last he also downplays when he starts being that editor of the like university journal. Yeah. Like and, and the journal, the by the way, of, like, of of Trinity College, no less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's such a big deal. And then in the book, Sally manages to make it sound like an afterthought like when the way that it was described i was like i was like well there was no one there so he did it and then three months later he was still doing it because they never filled the position <laughs> yeah, that was so obviously, funny that was it wasn't so funny. because they i really feel like it wasn't because no one wanted to take it or that no one there was nobody i really feel like it was because there was nobody better at that sure point. yeah like everybody was like it well, he's here now. Yeah. And then I guess there's also that aspect na that one girl in the journal really liked. And see, Anna, probably see, had Sadie. influence. Sadie? Yeah. yeah. She, prob- she probably had influence to um, like keep him there. But then also at the same time, it's like, I feel like he's just really good. Because sure, in the yeah. scene after that, after Sally introduces um, that fact that he's been in the literary journal the whole time, is when he... This is literally the end of the novel. But like he gets that email from right. what I imagine is probably Colombia in my head. He never says, but I feel like it's Colombia. <laughs> yeah, it just says it's a New York MFA program yeah. and I'm like, yeah, yeah, only so many. Come on. So, yeah. <laughs> also like, like, which one? Wait, also like a fun fact. Like, 
the fact that he men they mention that Marianne mentions, hey, you could apply for funding, that like immediately narrowed it down because I was like, some of those yeah. programs do not offer do like not very funding. generous yeah. funding. Yeah, oh, come on, so this good. guy would know. There's yeah. no way. <laughs> yeah, there, like there's no. And way also, to... I thought that like her saying that also was she wasn't saying it out of like malice or whatever. Yeah. Like she knew that would have been a concern, and and again, this is going back to what I was saying earlier. Not. I mean, like, in reference to... Or, like, when I see it as a reflection of, like, when Lorraine was like, why don't you want to tell me... Uh, why, why, why don't you want to tell people about you and Marianne? Is it because she's rich? And he's like, whoa, I never thought about that. I feel like when Marianne said, you can apply for funding, he wasn't even thinking about it like that also. Yeah. Like, I feel like he really was just like, no, why would I go to this? I'm not good enough. Yeah. Like, I don't think it was about the money thing at all yeah. at that point. Right. But... That's also something that I think uh, comes out of what happens to them, I guess, in college. So uh, coming through right. Debs and everything, they both get into Trinity and they both attend Trinity. But by the time they are starting out their freshman year, they're not really in contact. Um, yeah, yeah, like they, he loses like touch of her most for a while. Of- the break after that, well, because Marianne stops going to school, exactly, and she also stops. Answering his texts, yeah. Text, yeah, which is what Lorraine congratulates <laughs> yeah. her for, which again, yeah. mother of the year, um, and then, and then she basically goes to everyone, and then moves to Dublin, and it's not until a party, yeah, of like, some dude, like Connell, at Connell gets invited to a party by one of his classmates in his critical theory seminar. That guy's name is Garrett. And I remembered yeah. him because he seemed like one of the only POCs on the show. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. In the show, he's POC? He's, oh, yeah, my he God. He, yeah, he was definitely not white. Um, <laughs> nice. But but then also, like, it was weird because he, the, if you remember, his character at some point, like, kind of makes an argument for why they should allow neo-Nazis to speak. Neo-Nazis? <laughs> yeah. Which is, is yeah. So Isn't I was that like, why also I don't know, man. Connell makes fun of him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking, and yeah. and we should make fun of him now because come on man. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um but like that whole time, like, you know, that connection that he makes with sort of Garrett to get him to invite him to his party is not something that he is able to strike on right away because once he gets to Dublin he feels very much out of place. Like Yeah. Okay, like something that I don't think I've seen talked about a lot that I really want to give Sally Rooney a lot of credit for is she does such a great job at capturing what it's like, uh, the difference of between living in the province and living in the urban center of your country. Uh, right. Like, as you know, like, I mean, like, uh, I'm from Cebu, uh, and I had to move to Manila for university, and that's how I met yes, you. Yes, you did. But, yeah. like, I was always sort of, like, kind of aware of those differences and yeah. thinking, like, oh, man, like, you know, the... Like, I mean, there's one aspect of it that's, like, the culture in Manila is very insulated to the mm-hmm. point that, you know, like, I would, like, my one of my regular jokes is that when you guys refer to the South, I kind of say, like, well, I'm from the Deep South. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, or like if I say, oh, like, maybe so-and-so knows her because she's from the South, you feel like, well, I'm from the South, I don't yeah. know her. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, maybe not that South. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, it's like, oh, you meant Alabama. Oh, you meant, like, just, like, <laughs> South of Manila. Yeah, that's yeah. racist. Yeah. So, and I feel like, you're so right. They, yeah, there's that aspect of it that's really, like, when I could see, like, Connell sort of struggling to meet people, like, and, and nobody really sort of, like, extending themselves to introduce themselves to him mm-hmm. until Garrett came along then that that's where I was like oh you know she pretty much nailed it there is yeah. however one other person who kind of extends himself yes is this your Connell. boy is this and your boy yes let I, I let me just preface this by saying that I came into this episode prepared to defend Connell Waldron neck chain stand nation yeah. Yeah, thank you. But I am now proud to officially announce yes. that I am a member okay. of the Nile tribe. Yes. Nile is that what is, they're called? Nile is <laughs> the best character that Sally Rooney has written. I know. Nile, the, the roommate, the flatmate mm-hmm. of Kano, yeah. 
yes. from college onward. He does this nothing guy. but good things. But the, yes, he, he is what a guy. I wish what a uh, guy. And honestly, well, I don't know if it's as much in the show because I haven't seen his bits in the show. But like in the book, palang, I was like, he is the first guy I trust besides Connell. You know, like where. When it's like Sina Eric from their high school, yeah, you're just like, okay, yeah, these yeah, are these guys all are dicks. Children. These guys are dicks. And then when you meet, yeah, 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 and then when you meet Garrett, you're like, okay, he's a neo-Nazi and a dick. Great. <laughs> and is there um, hope at all? <laughs> and then you, you, yeah, like literally, it's like, okay, all the, the world is just shitty men. Um, and then, and then when even Niall's introduction, palang, it's soft. It's so soft. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like he lets. Connell stay there and like uh what else is there? what are three other things Look, about okay, him here's the thing about Niall like <laughs> like um literally when we were reading the book like I was like not really clocking the descriptions of him I was just clocking his name like his name is Niall like yeah. from 1D yeah and like it got to the like point the one, yeah. where in my head he literally is Niall yeah exactly so I literally I literally him. got to a point where I found yeah. cast Niall from 1D as Niall yeah. Connell's roommate. <laughs> and I was so yeah, surprised yeah. because when you see him on the show, he actually looks nothing like Niall from 1D. From 1D? Yeah, he looks <laughs> he looks more like Kyle Mooney from SNL. <laughs> oh, but does he? That makes That's... him even cooler. Like, <laughs> I only sp- yeah, yeah, want yeah. to befriend this guy even more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Now I have to reread all his scenes as Kyle. Seriously, no, but like Niall, so funny, Niall literally is the guy who... No, but he's a... He is... He's, he he's is the guy who friend, sends period. Connell to therapy later on yeah. in the book. He's the he one who refers him to, to the free yeah. counseling service. It's like, dude. Yeah. Or even like... There's no, and a, about, yeah. even a part where like uh, Connell... Isn't there a part where like he he where Connell loses his job or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get and into I'll... that because the thing, the thing, the whole okay. thing there is that um, like Connell, whilst trying to fit into Dublin, is also trying to kind of make himself sort of like financially stable. What that and this is like all pre scholarship uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and the whole thing for him is that at some point he kind of loses his job, so he has to go home for the summer. Because he can't um, afford yeah. to stay in Dublin. Yeah. And Niall, hero that he is, tells Connell, I will hold your room for you. Like, I will sublet it. But when you come back for the semester, you can have the room. Yeah, like, it's Connell's yours. Like, yeah, and that's, like, that's what I meant. Yeah, uh, okay. I meant. But, like, he he barely recognized. Like, honestly, game. <laughs> Man. I love, I love Niall. I, I feel like, again, Connell was such so in his head that he didn't even realize... What, yeah. What Niall had just offered to him. Exactly. And obviously he takes it though. Right. Because like when he comes back in September, it doesn't seem like that was a, an issue anymore. No, he's still hanging out like with Niall all the way. Like the issue was just way. that summer. Niall, yeah. truly the yeah, best they friend. Yeah, they go to Europe together and everything. He's the best friend of the book. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, and even, like, even, and like, uh, that bit when they're in Italy already. Should we go back to this? Is this going back? I can't, well, I can't even tell. We're not even going forward. <laughs> anyway, when they're in Italy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, anyway. anyway Sorry. Go on, go on, go on. But if we're just going to talk about Naya, like that part, I feel like was so significant, even though it was so minor. When when they're in Italy and they're having dinner and um, Marianne has a f- little fight with somebody. Yeah, with Jamie, with Jamie. Um, no, with Jamie. We mentioned it already earlier. Yeah. With Jamie. Niall is the one who basically tells Connell to, like, go follow them. <laughs> Not because a- I guess maybe, yeah. like, okay, we would, like, we would say in Tagalog, like, make kutub siya. Like, he could feel that it was not gonna go well. Not only that, but when and, like, Jamie Connell... is, like, getting really aggressive okay. during dinner, like, Niall is just like oh yeah he the calls ball him out. of su- not only that but he's yeah. also the ball of sunshine who's like like countering right. Jamie's like like pure negativity like Jamie's like what do we even need to go yeah. to Venice and then Niall's like hey you know I'd like to see yeah. the world like meet people like hell I'd like yeah, to travel with yeah. this guy yeah 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 my guy <laughs> my guy, my guy. <laughs> truly my guy um, also I just want to say um, about Jamie you. Have you ever seen the movie The First Time? Or First Time? I don't know. It was a Dylan, Dylan O'Brien movie and right. that girl from 
Oh my god. I don't like her. That you got much. this. Sorry, but like, you got, I'm going to be scared if you I say the her. name of what? someone who I might have a crush on. No, no, no. She's not a crush. Okay. She's not a crush. But like, she, she was in that movie with Asa Butterfield also, where he was like a kid that was dying. Oh, oh know? my god. Anyway, I can't believe I'm flaking out. What's her name? No, but I, I'll look for it later. But like, right. her. Um, and it's basically a movie about like two. Pe- this could basically be like a Sally Rooney film also oh you know who else is in this movie the guy the Bida of um submarine <laughs> anyway he plays like one of the friends <laughs> yeah okay go ahead <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, sorry so yeah, i just yeah. i just want to say that like the girl in that it starts where she has an older boyfriend and the older boyfriend is played by um oh my god i'm so sorry that i'm like flaking on all the names of all of these actors the elrich from or Ehrlich from uh, oh, from Silicon, from Silicon Valley? Valley? Yeah, he plays like the older boyfriend. Now I really don't know what like... this movie is. I have no idea. Oh, okay. I'll show it to you later. But like this guy, he, er, um, that actor's, Ehrlich's character in this movie is who I imagine Jamie to be, except uh, because you know how that guy is like really tall. Yeah. And he's basically the same. Like in the movie, That's true, he says actually. so many negative things. He's also really drunk in it most of the time. And, like, he also says really passive-aggressive sexist things about the girl. Absolutely. Uh, where, but then, like, Jamie isn't that passive-aggressive right. about it. Okay. He's just aggressive. And, yeah, sorry, that's all I want to say, that, like, he is who I fan casted no, for Jamie. Yeah, no, I, I actually... after that bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I actually think where, you hit where the nail right Where she says head. that he's ugly. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say who my fan cast of Jamie was? <laughs> yeah, I want to know. I want to know. Because <laughs> you... Who is he in the, you know, we're, in the show, in, though, In actually. terms of... Okay, he's like a thin guy. He's like a small, puny guy. He's a small, puny guy. Right. He looks more... Because he's supposed to be smaller than Yeah, him. he looks more like um that guy from God Help the Girl. The main guy? God yeah, the, the main girl. guy. Oh, wait, yeah. Didn't you tell me that you basically casted the one, all the of one, God Help the Girl the one on who this? Is, the one who's from years and years. If you, listener, know right. who I'm talking about, it's that yeah. guy. Um, okay. That's if you, what listener, he also know who like. I'm talking about in first time, <laughs> If you, you You've listener, got want casts. to be a guest on this podcast <laughs> so that you can <laughs> fill in all the things we don't yeah. know, please like, yeah, give yeah. us a message. DM us. Yeah, like, honestly, just hit us up. Um, so no, okay. So I I ended up fan casting <laughs> Boris Johnson, <laughs> the Prime Minister of the oh, United what? Kingdom. Fuck, and I totally forgot about this. I hate you <laughs> because I, he was such a posh. I really he was such I totally a forgot. Posh dick. Okay, I just want everyone to know that he had told me. <laughs> he had told me. Mio had told me this like days ago. And I guess I hated the idea so much that I just repressed it because I I literally hate that. Yeah, said because this. like here's and it was the so thing. funny, right? Because when okay, go go. Yeah, because they they have that description where like like okay, like the whole time, like I I'm getting the sense that oh Jamie is this very like magulo, um kulot guy, like he really doesn't know how to clean up all these things, all these like horrible things, and the thing that really sealed the deal for me was that when um, Connell, one night, he gets beat up, and so he calls on Marianne for help. And then, like, when he walks into her apartment and Connell and Jamie are kind of standing next to each other, Sally's description of, like, Marianne's perspective is that uh, even standing next to a beat-up Connell, Jamie looked like the worst yeah. guy. And I was like, this guy sounds yeah, exactly like, like the Prime Minister of the United like, Kingdom, <laughs> Boris Johnson. And Connell was literally bleeding from yeah, his mouth. Le- yeah, from his mouth. And the worst part was... Like his, wait, here's, when here's, he spit, it was red. You forget the worst part of uh, yeah. me telling you that comparison, which is that um, the day after... That he went to Italy? Okay, the day after I saw the episode where they go to Italy... <laughs> There was like a news report where a rumor had gone out that Boris Johnson had taken a secret trip to Italy. <laughs> and I immediately to sent Italy. it to you and I was like, see, I told you, I told you. It's him, it's him. And it's I was him. like, Jesus. And then you even said, Marianne has a lot of explaining Explain. to yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> so she is basically who I thought. Um, okay, we kind of skipped over a lot. Um, we, we, we basically encircled oh, yeah, most sorry. of the things that happened around the main the main storyline that's going on between 
um, their time in Trinity College and what goes on in Italy, uh, which is that um, shortly after reuniting at that party of Garrett's, uh, Connell and Marianne basically get back together. They kind of like realize like, okay, you know, we can, what's past is past. Let's leave it water under the bridge. Uh, let's be friends again. And like after a party mm-hmm. where she kind of like drunkenly or she's like high, where she sort of admits that she still has feelings for him. The next morning he oh, picks yeah. her up, he brings her home yeah. and then they basically sleep together again. And they, they, they kind of just keep resuming it. And that yeah. sort of leads into yeah. um, the, this whole dilemma about when the school year is ending and then he loses his job. He gets shy. He becomes hesitant to ask her if he can stay over at her place, which Niall, best character of the book, tells him to do. Yeah, he supports it. He's right. basically like, do it like and, early though. And that's sort of the and, thing. And Connell's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but Connell is like very hesitant because I, I don't know if, if this is the right way to describe it, but it's like he sort of sees asking Marianne for it as a handout. Even though, like everyone, right. like even the reader knows, like of course she's gonna say yes. Yeah, what are you like talking she's gonna about? freaking say yes. Yeah. Niall says it. Yeah. Yeah. So and then um, you find out later. Should should we say that? Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know Wait, what are you gonna say. <laughs> no, I was gonna say like where you find out later that like Marion says the same thing too. Like if you had just asked me. Right. Exactly. There's a crucial scene. I, I would in have fact. said yes. There's a crucial scene where it's like the last week before he has to go home, and you can tell like that at the he's. Pool party? No, no. After that, where they're kind of just hanging. Oh, was it at the pool party? But either way, it's like the last week before he has to go home. And he kind of tells her, hey, so I have to move out of my flat because I can't afford it and I lost my job. And oh, that's can, after the pool party. You can yeah, tell yeah, that yeah. he's waiting for her to offer, not to ask. He's too shy to ask. Yeah. And then when she doesn't offer, yeah. Yeah, he gets okay. really Which disappointed. It's and then, half his fault. Yeah. But in. yeah. And the, the, then the thing that makes it completely his fault is that he then says after that, so I guess you want to start seeing other people now, which she yeah, did which is not like super... want to hear. <laughs> yeah, and she literally was just like, yeah, okay. And that's how she gets into the like, relationship freaking... with Jamie. Which sucks, With Jamie. Man. And so, part, we... Oh, damn. You, yeah. It's your fault, Connell. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, I don't want to put that on him. But also, Listen I to your friend, him. Niall, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and Lorraine. Yeah. Niall and Lorraine. Niall come Lorraine, on. Yeah. Tag team. If they ever met, holy shit, they Wait. would just like Connell would be an infinitely better See, person. See, that makes me wonder because like, okay, well, okay, fine. You're at least like putting them independently of one another. But it almost made me like worry. Like, whoa, actually, Connell has such a great support system, you know, and yet he still turns out the way we know he turns out, which is quite sad. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. And I guess that adds to what we already mentioned earlier that he's so in his own head yeah. and his anxiety is really bad. So maybe, and you know, yeah, he, with you saying in the, when Niall said that, that he could come back in September and he kind of like, that kind of went over his head because mm. he was too busy thinking, worry about something else. Like right. that, that might be part of it. You know? Right. Well, come second year, they end up taking the sco- university scholarship exams uh, we mentioned, like, in the last episode that it's, like, a voluntary exam that uh, students can take to be funded by the school. And, I mean, like, y- you know, obviously for, like, Connell, the stakes of getting that scholarship are very high because he ends up getting funded for the rest of his college university education. Mm-hmm. And the free... He gets a free dorm. Free he gets dorm. Free and then meals. he also gets, like, at least... Like one meal? Yeah. Or, a day I, I, or I would, yeah. Either one or th- I would think almost even three. Like he's basically settled. Oh, really? Which it actually yeah. also then explains. That's insane. Yeah, exactly. Like it's so crazy. And that's like, I mean, like, like that sort of, that doesn't affect Marianne as much because she doesn't need to worry. Yeah, because she, yeah. And she does it for completely different Yeah, reasons. she's doing it kind of like to assure herself like, yeah, for I can do herself. stuff, right? And, yeah. Which is like, okay, fine. Granted, it's kind of important for her. But it, it, it but almost... But obviously, like, at the yeah. end of the day, she could have also, in the most, like, basic of terms, really lived without it. Yeah. And I think it's the most that Sally ever really comes to, like, critiquing a system. Uh, yes. Like, so, in, the, in that LRB interview that I watched of hers, 
she was talking about how she doesn't feel like in her writing she necessarily sets out the critique systems. And she was like citing yeah, there's that I scene agree. earlier on when they were still in Carrickley uh, about how they go to the ghost estates that were caused by like the financial crisis yeah. and the housing yeah. crisis. And she was saying like, yeah. I kind of just set that scene there to give them a different place to let their secrets out. Go. And like, it's very evocative, obviously. I mean, I, I don't mean to make it seem like she was like just doing it for the aesthetic, but it seemed for her like a convenient place where that dynamic could come through clearly yeah. yet again. Right? And also f- something for like Irish people would be recognizable. Yes. As a uh, context, I guess, of right. when this is. Even if she does say like the years and stuff. Sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Whereas like. And, and then oh. also, I was going to say something related to that. No. Okay, so go All right, on. yeah. Uh, where, whereas with the university scholarships, there's sort of like this clear sense that she's trying to like paint it out in a negative light, especially for Connell's character. Uh, yeah. She was saying... Oh, yeah, and Connell even says... Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. No, sorry, good. No, or can I go? Yeah, go. Okay, I was going to say, like, when after they um, receive this, like, when there's that event, Deba, him and Marianne are like having breakfast or something yeah. the morning after. Yeah. And then he makes that comment that's like, those those waiters serving us yesterday, those were students. That's yeah. so fucked up though, right? And Marianne was like, oh, yeah, I guess. But yeah. what are we supposed to do? Give the money back? And then right. he was like, well, obviously not, but like, why does it have to... Basically, he was like, why does it have to be this way? Yeah, you exactly. Know? And and I, I'm not sure, yeah. like, I don't know if it came through, at least with Marianne, but I wonder if that implication also extended to Lorraine's status as an employee for her family. Uh, y- yes. Yeah, because this in, I think it's in the same scene that, like, um, Lorraine, where, like, she realizes, I mean, Marianne realizes why. Apparently, it's, like, the first time Marianne outright is like, oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. Working class. Yeah, that's true. Because in, that's true. towards the end of that scene, that's also where she go, where she admits, uh, "I know that my mom paid your mom basically nothing." Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's it. Um, so he starts getting really alienated by this scholarship status that he's going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Marianne, uh, she basically enters into that relationship with Jamie. Uh, yeah. Oh, and by he, by this time, he's also already dating Helen. Yeah, so he's starting to date this girl named Helen Brophy, who, like, at first glance, I thought, I was actually rereading, when I was rereading it this time, I was kind of convinced that Helen, he and Helen were a better relationship than him and Marianne, except that Helen also except comes off she as was so... very insecure... Yeah. About about his baggage, which obviously is yes. the opposite of what he needs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like at first it does seem good. And like they do seem super bad guy. Yeah. Like they seem really, you know, good for each other. Like he doesn't feel uncomfortable around her family. Even yeah. though it's implied that her family is also like more or it's less rich. Also... They're like doctors. Yeah, and then there's this whole they they have this whole conversation about his accent. Right, 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 right. Like, she's like, I can't understand a word you're saying, <laughs> which is so crazy to me. I'm like, oh, God, guys. Um, which is basically, like, the, I guess, Dublin version of, like, you're so provinciano. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but, like, so there's that. And then, like, even with that conversation where he says, where she, where she basically tells him that he's not cool, but she's okay with it. Like, he's not bothered by it, though. Yeah. It's It's not until she starts really... She gets pissed at... Or, like, she gets annoyed at, about Marianne yeah. at a party that, that he kind of is like, oh, he's being really weird about this. Yeah, and, and it gets worse when they have to go home. Their friends... Yeah, wait, dies. is that is that before Italy or after Italy? It's That's after, after. Italy. Sorry, okay, wait, let's, let's like, yeah. just sort of backtrack because Italy... Um, so she breaks up with Jamie. We also haven't mentioned yet that they... Are in, they were in a like a sort of S and M relationship where right. Jamie was beating her oh, and she yeah. really did yeah. not. You know, she she actually she wasn't. wasn't really, she blatantly says to yeah. Connell, "I don't like it, yeah. but I'm still gonna do it because she feels like she has to perform <laughs> a role for yeah. Jamie, which she doesn't have to really perform for Connell." Yeah, and 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 when okay, can I just say that scene also where they tell each other, like okay, so they have that. 
this is before Italy. They go to to have coffee and they both reveal things that piss each other off, but not about each other. Like just about how other people treat the other person. Like she she tells him about Jamie. And at first he's supportive, like, well, he's always liked you. And then Marianne has that mini flashback about how Jamie texted her pa one time, like, you should be with somebody who yeah. would take you seriously. Sure and thing, she Boris. it was so laughable that she showed it to Connell pa. <laughs> La- last <laughs> like, time we trusted how, again, you about that, Boris put a whole country to... Le- yeah, okay, all country. right. <laughs> and then, so... So so at first that part is going well. Like he's like, well, he liked you, naman, and then she's like, yeah. Also, he hits me in bed, and he's like, whoa, okay. Yeah, I like don't like where this is going. Yeah, he's very concerned. Yeah, he's very concerned. And then it's also very telling that he doesn't like it anyway, despite not even knowing about her family yet. Yeah. Yeah. This was before he finds out about her family. Yeah. Like he's really just like I'm so not comfortable about yeah. this. And at one point he even says, "Sorry if I'm unfashionable." Yeah. Like, and she's just like, "No, it's okay. I don't even like it really." And he's like, "So why are you doing it?" And right. she's like, "I don't know." And then, and then she like, you know, she super brushes it off. And then after that, it's Connell's turn to brush it off, brush off something rather. And he basically talks about how during the summer when. Uh, he was back home. He he got assaulted basically. Yes. By an old teacher of theirs. Yeah. And or like a former teacher. Well, yeah. I guess she is. Oh my god, their high school old. teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, their high school teacher assaults him, and Marianne's reaction is basically similar to Connell's reaction. It's like I'm gonna to kill. Jamie, I'm gonna except kill. Except she verbally, yeah, she verbally is like, "I'll kill her if yeah. he touches you again. I will. If she touches you again, I'll slit your. I will slit her throat." Yeah. And Connell was like, haha, you're so funny. And she's like, no, I will do it. I don't even care. And he was like, but you'll go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> Such a funny... I like the fact that he didn't even say, you're going to kill a person. It's yeah, more it's like, like oh, gonna... but then you'll be yeah. away. <laughs> like, you know. It's like, all sweet. Um... <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, no, um, but I'll really do it. So And I feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, things come to a front when they're in Italy because that's the point yeah. where like Jamie kind of just like reaches a breaking point where like it's clear they can't be together anymore. And Connell, not that he's using taking the opportunity, but he obviously like he does his best to comfort her. And they nearly, very nearly sleep with each other when Marianne yeah. starts revealing like, oh yeah, my my dad used to like beat me and my mom. And then yeah. like, my brother is kind of like... Like picking up after him, yeah. And Connell's response, yet again, another fatal mistake on his part. Kind of responds to her. He basically responds to her as if something warranted that behavior. Like he keeps asking her, "Wait, wait, but what? What? What wait, made him yeah, say that? Yeah, when did this start? Why would they say that?" And she's just so disappointed yeah. in him because it makes her seem like she did something to warrant it. Yeah. And she just kind And of she says as much. Yeah. She says, so are you, you think I deserve... She doesn't even ask. She yeah. says, you think I deserve it. Yeah. It's really... Yeah. That's, a, that's for me, like, one of the more depressing... Like, it kind of yeah. just kind of goes downhill from it's there. It's such it's a so good depressing. scene. But, like, it's so sad. It's so layered also. Yeah. Because, like, I feel like all... It's also um, him taking advantage of his relationship with Lorraine. Or, like, taking for granted. Because, like... I think even if you say, like you've said you've mentioned Mio that you know Connell just wants to be validated by Lorraine all the time. I feel like at, at the bottom, like in his like heart of hearts, um, he he knows that she'll still accept him mm-hmm. and still loves him. Right. And so he does mention that to not not that specifically, but like he projects that at Marianne, like in some other instances also. Yeah. Where she's always, where she does kind of insinuate that she doesn't like her family. He he gets defensive of them, even though he doesn't know them. Exactly. And yeah. even though Lorraine has already told him, like your like, past. I mean, like uh, Lorraine tells him, like she uh, she has a hard time at home. Also, like cut her some slack. Yeah. Like he doesn't think anything of it at the beginning. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And then he at that scene in Italy he does feel really foolish because he realizes also that he's been super stupid. Right. One last thing I will say about um, the whole Italy segment is it's 
two for two. Sally Rooney has had two books where she sends her characters off to another European country for a little side trip. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is also a very just European thing. And yeah. I think that's just their thing. And she mentioned as well that um, in the third book that she's now currently working on, she has plans to <laughs> yet again... Um, oh really? Yeah. There's another Euro, mini likes, Euro trip. She likes sending people out to Europe, which I thought yeah. was like really funny. It's like that's the most European thing I've ever heard. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. And it's always they always have to go to someone's like the rich yeah, friend's villa house, or and then something has else. to happen. Absolutely. Maybe Spain will be the next one. Um, I... <laughs> so after okay. this, I mean, like in my head, like it just makes like math. Yeah. It's co- it, like. What's that? Portugal. Either that or Greece. I don't know. One of those two. All right. Um, so okay. after Italy, they're ki- they kind of spend some time apart from each other because um, Marianne ends up doing her junior year, her JTA, in yeah. <laughs> in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, while Connell stays between Trinity and Carrickley. And uh, the thing that deeply affects Connell at the time... And Marianne as well, actually, uh, is that one of his friends from school, Rob, uh, commits suicide. And so they go home for the funeral. And obviously, Marianne is there. She comes back for the funeral. But so does Helen. Which com- is a very Burgess move, I will say. Right. Like, she- but, sorry, that's just one thing to note about it, I guess. But yeah. like, other than that, I do find it very, um, like, for her to go home. I didn't realize that that's when that would happen. Yeah. Sorry, because I had not seen this part in the show. Mm. I just know that there was a funeral scene and I didn't know that that was the context. Right, right, like right. She had come home just for that specifically. Oh, right, right. Uh, and then Helen is also there, which um, kind of puts him in hot yes. water because then she starts yeah. accusing him of acting weird whenever she's around and not seeming interested to introduce her to his friends which is also like a weird yeah. thing to ask for because yeah. they're literally there for okay. a funeral yeah which she points literally out you, yeah and part of me also is like I mean like okay in that whole bit that has to be the one f- fight mm-hmm. of quote unquote fight someone has with Connell where Connell is in the right absolutely <laughs> you know what I mean like because in other instances where like someone is making him awai like his mom or even Marianne it's like it's because he really was not thinking about something thoroughly. Whereas this one, it was really like Helen. What the hell is your problem? Yeah, you know, like she gets so upset, and also, like I don't even remember if she even gave her own condolences. And no, the mother was yeah, a part yeah. where when they were there, when they were when they were getting ready to go to church. He wears a suit that is clearly, like, to him, too small enough for him. Yeah. Because he bought it for, like, his friend, his, his cousin's communion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was, like, he, like, thought that it was too tight around his shoulders and he couldn't move. Mm. And then freaking Helen is, like, you look handsome. And he's, like, what the hell is your problem? Like, even then, I think that triggers him being tense. Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, more tense than yeah. he has to be, you know. That's right. Like she was clearly not a good support system. Yeah, no, exactly. And I and I that In I that think moment. really catalyzes uh, the need for him to end up going to therapy. Thank there you, go. Niall. And of, yeah, obviously there's their breakup, and he goes to uh, therapy yes. with yes, um, the you, the counselor is named Yvonne, and then Yvonne kind of like asks him like who who is to reassess like who's your support system. And he immediately, like, it's like, yeah, Niall, obviously. But then he also, like, cites Marianne and says, like, it's difficult with Marianne because she's not here right now. Yeah. But she is basically who I consider my best friend, is, like, the gist of his answer. Right. And, like, kind of the counselor, like, sort of walks him through, like, okay, so this is kind of, like, the scale of depression that you have. And it's quite worrying. And, like, he acknowledges, yeah, that's that lines mm-hmm. up with all the panic attacks mm-hmm. I've been having. So they, like, kind of start to get him on medication. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, in Sweden, Marianne... Yeah. To is... his credit, can I just say, like, he... Sorry. Go ahead. Like, he um, was good about therapy. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, um, good on him for, like, answering that survey really honestly, even if he probably didn't uh, think anything of it. Sure. And, yeah. like, uh, I guess it's also, you know, credit to Niall for that. 
for to for putting him there in the first place. But like um after that one session you can tell that like he, you know, he goes back. Yeah. And, and takes and ends up taking it seriously. Because yeah. there's a part towards the end of the therapy scene where he where it does seem like like he's like um what's the word for it? Um like he's holding back on sure, it because yeah. he's like, Oh, I don't know if this will really help me. Which is like a normal, you know, um reaction to this sort of thing. But like as the novel kinda goes on, you can tell that he like started taking it seriously and just need to go. It was like good for him. I'm saying men should go to therapy. <laughs> that we should, my friends. That we should. Uh as for Marianne, you know yeah, you know who's a man who should go to therapy? Oh Marianne's yeah, Swedish like, boyfriend, her brother, or or I was and her that, Swedish boyfriend. Actually, yeah, sorry, there are also a her Swedish men boyfriend. Who should go to therapy in this book? Holy, uh, like literally <laughs> all the men except Niall. Oh yeah, my god, Niall, Niall, he's already been there, he done that. He's yeah, good. but um, yeah. Marianne's Swedish boyfriend Lucas. Who? Uh, oh my god, he was so this sketch guy, from the beginning. No, okay, like so he also oh like continues god. his pattern of abusive behavior. But the thing that makes it really like egregious is like Marianne does not even like have any interest in this sort of being degraded yeah. thing anymore. Like she kind of just yeah. like succumbs to him. Well, not even that's sorry, that's an ungenerous way to put it. But like, like mm-hmm. she kind of carries on in her relationship with him for a while. Until yeah. they have like this, and photo she's in shoot. Sweden for a while, right, right. And then she has this photo shoot, like very quickly, like we can glance over. It. It's like she has a photo shoot where he tries to tie her up, and like she resists, and she's like, "No, I don't want to do this." And she realizes, like, I, I actually don't want to be in this relationship. I'm better than this, which like good for her. She gets out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that whole scene also again going back to like um, Sally being really good at writing really difficult but gripping like scenes like that whole part that whole photo shoot scene from the beginning was so sketch yeah or no 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 sorry from the part where she, where she starts describing the game quote unquote yeah yeah i'm out i'm already like i it, quit the weird thing I about hate this. the weird thing about lucas is that like sort of his perspective or his view of the world is something like vaguely like there's an aspect of it that's very Nietzsche because he there was a right. bit where it was like saying that his sense of morality was not even di- dictated by what was right or wrong but, but by what was aesthetically pleasing and I was like that's literally Nietzsche <laughs> so uh, you know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> whether she's saying something about that yeah, or not I don't really that know the whole but... part where she was like yeah yeah but that, that it was so annoying like he's that fuck fuckboy art student yeah alam mo yun yeah like he yeah. really I was like man the Amana g- this is just Swedish fine arts boy you know <laughs> and that part going to what, going back to what you were saying where she was like um oh so you just have all these things here for the sake of like a shoot or like for the sake of aesthetic and he's like all of life is an aesthetic or something <laughs> like, like that it's <laughs> like it's, it's so <laughs> dude okay Jeez. Okay, so we're coming into like the home stretch of the novel, <laughs> literally, because like the last part of the novel kind of like takes place while they're back in Carrickley. Uh and okay. like Connell and Marianne are like hanging out casually again. And then there's a question like, oh man, will they? Won't they? And they almost sleep together again. Yeah. And then she sort of like kind of she says something right. that sort of triggers him to stop because he worries about doing it. She says, like, um, she says, like, uh, can like tell me that I'm yours or something, or it's like tell me that I belong to you or something like that. And he feels like weird, and then, like, oh he, yeah, she st- she basically starts edging him on. Yeah, she for starts projecting the stuff that she yeah. has like b- recently become into, quote unquote. Yeah, and he's truly too nice to do any of that shit. So he yeah like yeah. completely like holds back to his credit. Yeah. And then she ends up going home f- from there, uh, where she's confronted by Alan, who's like, you have been staying over that Waldron boy's house again. Like, I don't want you staying around there yeah. because people are going to talk about how Not even, like, like yeah. sorry, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, then, and then basically, like, she tries to, like, run away from Alan, and then Alan kind of breaks her nose by pushing the door on her. 
So she calls Connell. Into her, yeah. Connell comes to the rescue. And he totally... He doesn't beat... I wish... And, I, I almost yes. wish he beat the <laughs> shit but I, he, like, I sort of wish it also yeah. but like knowing that Alan might have been crying yeah and also knowing that he called for the mom oh, and man, she yeah. didn't really yeah. go yeah that was super satisfying Wait, yeah also sorry speaking of moms I completely forgot the, for me one of the most important things is right before he gets the call from Marianne he has that conversation with Lorraine, where Lorraine his mom yeah where yes. Lorraine says like you're the the proudest part of my life like i'm so valid- like she just validates yeah. it which is yeah. a scene by the she way finally it's a scene that doesn't appear in the tv series which in i the- was so weird at all oh, like no way like, how can you miss that like that's one that, that's me that's projecting my book is better scene. than the movie yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sensibilities but yeah, like yeah. that was such a weird thing like that they didn't include that yeah. like, did they think that he could already figure that it out in his own or was it too cheesy i don't know I quite like that right. scene being in the book because that. No, me too. I do. I did. She really laid like that it. ground out, and she. I mean, like as she closed it. as a single, as an only child of a single mother, also like I understand the importance of like conversations, you know. Yes. And um, I did really like that moment, and I feel okay. I had this in my notes, and this is related to this whole part. But like the thing about Sally also is that she's good at. She's really, really good at frustrating you, mm-hmm. for like ninety. Eight percent of the book, and then the last two percent is the most satisfying. Like the she says intense yeah. build up, yeah, to this bit where, like, yun nga, before Marin goes home, they they kind of have an argument, pa, and then they have sex, and then it gets awkward, and then they stop having sex, and then she goes home by herself. And then he has that conversation with the mom, and why, and then it's implied, like, Sally kind of notes that while that conversation is happening that's when alan is getting mad at right um, yeah at my at, at at marianne it, it's so interesting you say yeah. that yeah because in, and then because um sorry uh sally rini also like mentioned at one point that that's sort of her strategy as well for structuring her novels is that she kind of like sends the characters off in the wrong way and then by the end she's like no no okay we got to bring them back to where they need to be right 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 and so the build up to that part is so okay, specifically oh, did I say this already? That the end is so satisfying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because like as soon as that happens, like when Connell comes to uh and to his credit, it's because he knows now. You know, yeah. like she says she downplays it, but she's like, Oh, I fell and I hit my face. Yeah. And I'm bleeding. Yeah. yeah. Can you I don't know what to do? And he's like and on, I could f- he doesn't say it, but like I feel like he knew already that yeah, it was, was Alan. Like, activate that. So he, he activated himself. Yeah, he he's suddenly not drunk also. Yeah. Like, oh my god, the adrenaline super sobered him up. And like he so he rushes to her and then as soon as he confronts Alan, from there it's just like ugh. Probably, yeah, like like Marion's know, family like no longer so becomes like a presence in her life even. Yeah. Uh, yes absolutely which good I mean like there's like a minor thing at Christmas right yeah but where, also it's like but she's because from, with her like found family now yeah so because from, from then on she kind of already like sort of commits herself to like being around Connell all the time and making Connell her only link to home so like yeah yes. as you're saying later that Christmas uh, she ends up going back to Carrickley to stay with Connell and being with Connell's family, but when she encounters her mom in the supermarket, the mom just ignores her, like completely, like ghosts ignores, her. Ignores all of them. Yeah. Because he, them. Lorraine Pa is the one who right, says right, hello. Right. So it's pretty. Um, but yeah. It's pretty yeah. dark there. And part of me was like, whatever, good riddance. And Thank then you. after that, you have what's basically the last scene where, um, you know, it's like fast forward. Connell already basically has like a s- strong beginning to a literary career. He gets the acceptance letter from the MFA. Um, yep. He gets to launch the journal after he edits it. So that's great for him. Uh, Marianne is like staying on in Dublin. And th- there was like a, I remember there was like a description that I kind of stayed on. I didn't take it down, but there was something like they were sort of like two plants in the same pot or something. There was something about right. a plant in the last chapter. And um, at that junction, 
um, he kind of like hesitates to leave Dublin because he doesn't want to go away for Marianne. But Marianne's like, mm-hmm. it's just going to be a year and I'm just going to be right yeah. here. Um, and yeah. you could totally do this. You could. This could be the start of your career. This could be your way to break out of like the cycle that you're in. And you know, yeah, you'll, you'll... she's genuinely not trying to push yeah. him away. Yeah. And he, at first, I feel like he thinks that. Yeah. You know, like, um, like he's kind of like, "What are you saying? Like, I love you though. Why would I go anywhere else?" And she's kind of like, at first, she's hurt by it, right? Right. Because because he didn't tell her again because he was downplaying it so much. And his own capabilities. He didn't even tell her that he applied. And uh, she, at first her reaction is like, does Sadie know about this? Are yeah. you in love with her? <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, what the hell is your problem? Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, that was really bad on her end. But then, like, yeah, that's... as it went on, the more she was like, no, but he it's, should really do this, though. It's so funny because, like, in when they play that scene out in the, chap- in the, in the book, like, I remember thinking, this is weird tension to introduce in the very last chapter like even as yeah. i was revisiting it i was like i know where this scene is going but it's yeah it's, it's literally we're literally in the end game you don't rise the action <laughs> this yeah, yeah, close yeah. to the end and even in yeah. the show i think they kind of course corrected that by sort of like removing or downplaying sadie entirely so they don't have mm-hmm. that tension anymore um but yeah uh she basically encourages him to go and pursue his dreams Mm-hmm. While she um, feels secure in the knowledge that she actually feels like a normal person, yeah, she is a normal. Yeah, and okay, we, we haven't really we haven't really talked about like that that title oh, in the right. context of the yeah, whole book. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, even yeah. though Sally mentioned at some point that the title was one of the last things she came through with when she was writing the book. It comes up like four times. Yeah, and like the idea of it, it comes is up very more clear. than the chain. I yeah. just wanna say Yeah that chain stands <laughs> I have some bad news for you. So yeah. the word chain absolutely only appears disappointing once in the entire literally book. one time. Once. Oh, and it's and when it's like, he's beat up. Yeah and it's like more than fifty percent through the book. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, literally it's, it's a, crazy. And it's in passing pa like it's literally her being like oh hey I remember that chain so what we're saying is vote for Niall as the best <laughs> character that Sally Rooney has <laughs> ever written it's literally Net it doesn't even I want to see chance. Fleetwood a Niall Mac mini thought series. They, they were writing a good song when they wrote the chain I'm not I, I love the chain but I don't, yeah. I don't want to go yeah I love the chain I 100% okay. also anyway, love the chain um, yeah but um, um, the, the yeah, context so, like, of the title her the having normal title, people is that um, for her for Marianne for the longest time has seen like Connell as one of the normal people at school because he's liked even though he doesn't really feel that way or he, they don't really know who he is uh, and she kind of struggles to be liked the way Connell mm-hmm. is like all her life or at least for yeah. the span of time that the book extends and yeah. by the end after she kind of sheds all of these fake friends and these you know like trappings of Dublin life that don't really represent that for her she realizes that she does feel like a normal person um, when she's with Connell, which is like, I mean, cheesy to say, but, you know, given the journey that they do go through throughout the book, that is, you you do buy into that. I do buy into that. I definitely believe that she definitely feels like a normal person with him. Yeah. And she, I feel like that's also her own concern. I don't think um, Connell ever uses the phrase. Not so much. But like, it's the... It's the motif, I guess. For, for, for him, I think the normal uh, people comes with like... From Marianne. With that luxury of choice comes with being privileged, I suppose. Oh, right. Okay. But in his eyes, like, bad, yeah. like the fact that she fits into Dublin, which is like seen as a center in, in Ireland, she yeah. seems more like a normal person than he does, maybe. Yeah. But in her head, because of like her own experiences and because of like... Her brother and her parents. Right. She believes that she's the abnormal one. Yeah. And that's normal people. Yeah. So, Amanda, I think we are now moving into the closing part of the podcast. Uh, Last Mm -hmm. time, I said we should either say if a book is recommended or not recommended. Mm -hmm. Now, since we started this Mm -hmm. episode on a new foot, I think we should also sort of close it. 
on a new foot. Am I even using? I don't. I feel like I'm getting okay. the expression wrong. Or something. I yeah. <laughs> um, wrong foot. Maybe I think I meant to say wrong foot. Right yeah. foot. Wrong foot. New foot. Anyway, new foot. New There's foot. Only two feet. Um, the game is so a foot. Basically, instead of recommended or not recommended, I have now three mm-hmm. tiers that we could classify books under. Oh. Okay. Is the book required reading? Will it be required reading? Mm-hmm. Is it recommended reading? Or is it non-required reading? I see. I see, I see, I see. And I would okay. also like put it to you to uh, reclassify conversations with friends under this okay. new tier structure that we've decided. Yeah, okay. Do you want to go first? Okay, uh, I would say um, conversations with friends. I'm sort of on the fence of putting it as a non-required book. Uh Mm-hmm. I definitely think it's a good read um, and it's a you know I mean like if you like normal people I would definitely recommend it so it, 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 for me it would still stay as a recommended read but not a required read or not yeah. a non-required read for normal people I definitely qualify it as a required read um, because of how okay, much it kind of like um, for me at least it encapsulates um, what Sally's writing captures about all these things that are current to our moment and that I think if people will need to like look back at this time and say like well what was contemporary writing about uh, or uh, what was the writing the writing of contemporary it's definitely like this could be included like very easily well like all the things that we've talked about like there's so many talking points for it how about you yeah absolutely I get that okay so for conversations I would I would recommend it, but I don't think it's a required reading also. Mm-hmm. Um I or I don't know if it's because like we read that first and it's technically a while, but I don't know why that feels more that feels lighter than n- normal people is. Well, I guess yeah, going back to how this is supposedly shorter, but it's has a lot more going on. Um yeah, so uh, conversation with friends recommended not really required uh, for me. Um, But for normal people, and I think I said this in the beginning, but, like, I personally did not enjoy it that much. Mm -hmm. But, like, not because I thought it was bad. Like, I just generally... Like, her... It's because she's so so good at writing frustrating things that it makes it so unenjoyable for me. Like, I just want (laughs) this to be over because I just want them to be happy already. It's a very valid concern. Um, Yeah. Oh, sorry. I wanted to mention this also, but I saw earlier, um, I I saw this comment on, like, a YouTube video that was, like, a clip from the show. Mm -hmm. And the comment was literally like, oh, my heart hurts for these two so much. But also, I just wanted to punch them both in the face. <laughs> and that's how I felt. That's really how I felt also. Yeah. I was like, oh, you can't blame them. But then also, please just talk to each like other. They are, they are teenagers, and, yeah. sort of. Not really. Yeah, and then no. also, it's like you can't help it. Because, like, in the you know, they're so young. Yeah. It's like such a... It is a long-term coming of age. Um, so, I would also... But despite that, even if I personally had my frustrations with it, um, I would still recommend it, okay. and I agree that I think it should. If you're gonna read Sally, this would be the required one because I feel like um, there is something to learn from Sally, kahit papano. Right. Like whether it's about like creative writing, if you're that kind of reader, or if it's about, or if it's something from the story itself. Okay. Like both conversations and um, this definitely have like in incredible takeaways all right and there are multiple like I'm, i don't have to name any like if you've read both of them you probably know and uh um, which of these two so, yeah. books uh did you like more are you a conversation friend or a normal person oh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean i, Sorry, I i'm what? gonna put myself <laughs> as a normal person <laughs> If you want to be a Mr. Salary, okay. you you are a black. You you uh, could also be a no. clinic. Patient. I'm at the clinic, my friend. At- I am at the clinic. <laughs> at the clinic. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe I think I. There again, both were so difficult for me to get through because I just wanted to be over, but I think maybe I'd have to. S- 
Oh man, this is hard. I th- okay, you know what? I think it's okay for me to say that I don't have a favorite between them. That's fair. I'll accept. I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll accept that. As a <laughs> you'll accept it? All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> the meal prize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like for me personally, I, I don't. I wouldn't have a preference. Right. Um, but yeah. Right. But again, I still would really re- uh, recommend it. Looking back on like that that first thing that we ever mentioned about Sally too, that mm. about how she was labeled um, as a millennial, like the great the millennial first author, great millennial, yeah. right? Yeah, w- was that said after normal people? That was or said. After I think I can't remember. In between them, after conversations with friends, oh, they between. were already saying that. The right. first. I think I didn't understand it. Yeah. With conversations. Right. But I definitely understand it now. There, there's this really... normal people. There's sort of this, like, uh, sense that... I mean, like, part of the sense that I'm getting is that it is also kind of unfair to call her that on the basis of two books. Uh, which, uh, yeah. you know, are, are more than anything just... like I, they, I mean, they're very relatable books. No one can discount that. Um, mm. But, you know, yeah. for for us to rep- say that she rep- necessarily represents the time single-handedly is a little reductive. So, I mean, even though I said that I think you could read normal people and say, like, oh, this is definitely what happened in the time, she's not the only person that you have to read. I think the great millennial author can be plural. Like, you can look to different yeah. authors to kind of give you a better sense yeah, of agree. what the time is like. Agree. Yeah. And I guess with that, we close the book for now on Miss Sally Rooney. Yeah. The next time we'll hear from like her, uh, she's now working on her third book, which, if I'm not mistaken, was called uh, tentatively titled Beautiful World, Where Are You? She was working on that uh, in a for a fellowship that she had gotten in New York. Um, okay. So she's been working okay, on Okay, sorry. That. Can I just... Mm-hmm. Like, um, there's also... A, I should have mentioned this way earlier, but I just remembered it now. Um, the thing about her also that I think is quite nice is that she has two main characters that were writers, mm-hmm. but they did not necessarily feel uh, self-insert, you know? Okay. Okay. Like, I... Yeah. And then I, I also... Like, I appreciated that, like, Francis's journey as a writer or, like, experiences as a writer were, like, super different from Connell. And Absolutely. that also has to do with them being different people. Um, but then, like, that also shows that she didn't just make them writers just because, you know? Like, it's more like she knows how to apply that sense of being a writer to both of them, I guess. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But I don't. And I think, jumping from that, talking about writers, we can now officially announce... Our next mini series. Oh yeah, because you know, I mean, like when we started on this journey, I'm so excited. Oh man, like it feels like we started the Sally Rooney mini series like eons ago, or literally two weeks ago. But I know that's so weird. But, but yeah, but it's this so next mini series. I mean, it's so much shorter than it's been. This next mini series will last just as long because it is also a two book mini series. Two book mini series. And uh, Maddie, I know you're a two particularly big fan. Of oh, this yes. writer, so would you like to do oh, the honor of introducing hells. our next yes. miniseries? Okay, our next miniseries is going to be on the two-time best-selling works of Madeline Miller. Yeah! Pew, 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 pew! So that begins with Parker. Song of Achilles. That old, that good old song, good that old great song. song. Who could forget that song? Who could forget the song? Followed by her second novel, Circe. Circe. And that's Cersei? it. We'll debate on the title. Circe? Pronunciation. Sir, could it be Kirke? Kirke? Actually, it could oh, be. It could Churchy? Be. It really Actually, could be. no. Couldn't it be Churchy? It could be. It very no, much could just be. kidding. We might need to consult yeah. like some uh, yeah, classical lit experts on this. We have literally We have the resources. A professor that we, we can have ask. The yeah. <laughs> we we have around five people we can ask. Stay tuned on that. Um, yeah, uh, I'm so excited. All right, and I guess with that, uh, we're gonna have to call it a day or call it a night. Yes, and uh, a night. Thank you for listening to the rec room. Please You're remember, really if you like this show, do consider rating, reviewing, or oh, subscribing to our podcast. Uh, 
And tell us what you think also about Absolutely, Sally. Absolutely, yeah. If you, you can now if talk you have to us, thoughts, actually. Tweet you know, us. By this point, we'll have like tweeted 20 different videos or pictures of normal people and or Sally Rooney and, and or who we would probably fan cast in the conversations with mm-hmm. friends mini series. No, well, okay. But, right. you know, give us a shout. Yeah. Let us know you're there. Yeah. We want you. Talk to us on Instagram. We want to have a conversation with you, our friends. With you, our friends. We want to be the normal people yeah. with you. Hit us up on Instagram and Twitter. That's at the Rec Room Pod. Yes. And with that, as always, he was a boy. All right. She was a girl. Okay. It was a chain. Oh my God. <laughs> he was a Niall. Can I make it any more Can, obvious? Yeah. Man, if she could have a story that was just Niall and then I a would chain, read that. I like Niall with a chain, whoo! Oh, the adventures man. of Niall and Chain. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Niall and Chain. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Rec Room. This episode was edited by me. Our artwork is by Mandy. Our theme song is 64 Sundays by Twin Musicom, which is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution License. Check out more of their music at www.twinmusicom.org. For more updates on The Rec Room, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Rec Room Pod. Rec spelled R-E-Q.